In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of really nice features of the Google Chrome console, the developer console that allows you to access and edit your content right from the browser. So I'm going to start with a really simple HTML page that just has a title and the meta tag in the head, and then one heading H1, which says this is a heading and a simple paragraph. And then I've got one style rule for the heading H1 that just changes the font family from the default, which is usually times to Arial. And then if Arial doesn't appear on my computer, then we'll just get the whatever the default sans serif font is on the computer. So this is what the page looks like in the browser. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the developer console. I'll choose developer tools. And I've opened this up pretty nice and wide so that we have plenty of room to look at what's in the developer console. And over here on the left is where we can access the elements that are in the page. And you'll notice as I scroll down, if I mouse over one of the elements that appears in the page, the Chrome browser highlights that so you can see which element is being selected essentially. And then over here on the right, I'm looking at the styles that appear in the page. Right now, the body of the page is what's selected in the elements console. So we're seeing the style for the body element. If I select H1, then we'll switch to seeing the style for the H1 tag. Now you might notice that when I select an item, you can see this equal equal dollar sign zero. And this is a fairly new addition to Chrome. And you might be wondering, what is that? What is that equal equal dollar zero? So let's see what it is. Turns out that equal equal dollar zero means that this element is the most recently selected element that you've selected in this elements console, the developer console. And what it's done is it's automatically storing that element in a variable with the name dollar zero that you can access in the console. So let's give this a try. I've selected the H1 heading by clicking on it. So I'm going to jump over to the console window, which is where we can interact with the JavaScript in the page. And I can type in $0. And it shows me the heading that I have selected over here in the elements window. So that's an easy way to get access to the thing you've selected in case you want to try out some JavaScript on that element. So for instance, I could come in here and I can change the inner HTML of the heading by simply specifying $0.innerHTML equals updating the heading. And you can see that that changes the heading in the page. Now, of course, that does not change the heading in the HTML. That is still, this is a heading in my file, but I've temporarily changed the heading dynamically in the browser by updating $0 the variable which represents this element in the page. And actually, Chrome has multiple variables, 0 through 4, so that you can access the five most recently selected items in the page. So let's give that a try. If I select this as a paragraph, you can see that Chrome has now changed the value of $0 to be this paragraph. So if I go over to the console and I type $0, it'll now be the paragraph. But you can think of this like a stack. What it's done is it's pushed the item that I had selected earlier, the heading, one down in the stack. So now that is the value in the $1 variable. And if I come back to the elements and I click, say, the body, now the body is the most recently selected element. And the heading and the paragraph have been pushed down the stack again. So if I come over here and choose $0, we should see the body. $1 should be the paragraph, $2 should be the heading, and it is. So these dollar sign variables that Chrome has added to the browser give you an easy way to access the most recently selected elements that you've been playing with in this elements window through the console without having to first get that element from the DOM using document.getElementById, or even making sure that you've added IDs to your, to your elements in the first place. Another way you can update the content of the page dynamically to play around, see what works for you, is you can actually just double click on the content. So I can change this back to, this is a heading, just by double clicking on it and typing. And it 
this does this nice highlighting thing to show that I've just changed the content and you can see that the content has indeed changed in the page. And again, this is now assigned to the dollar zero variable. So if I jump over to the console and I'll clear that and type in dollar zero and you can see that the content has changed there too. All right, so let's change the paragraph to add some spice. So you can see that we've added the add some spice to the paragraph, which now shows up in the page. This is now the most recently selected element. So if I go in here and type dollar zero, we see the paragraph and its new content and dollar one and we see the heading and its new content. So this is kind of a great way to explore the content on your page and play around with it and also try out different JavaScript functions by accessing the content using these dollar variables, which makes it very easy to experiment with things and kind of do design on the fly. You can also do that with your CSS. So let's select the heading here. And let's say I want to try a different font. Well, rather than going in and having to edit my CSS and my HTML, I can actually just double click and change. Let's change this to Verdana and see what the difference is and see it immediately changes the font of the heading. All right, let's try another one. Let's try Georgia. And there you can see that now the heading is in the Georgia font. So this gives you a really easy way to experiment with the style of your page as well. And again, kind of design on the fly. I can even add new style elements to the rule for the H1. All I have to do is click right here and it gives me a new line. So let's say, for example, I want to add a font size. So I'm going to make the font quite a bit bigger by setting it to 3EM. Now notice that down here in the user agent style sheet for H1, and that's the style sheet that is set by default in the browser. So this would be any style that I have set by default for um, my HTML pages through the user agent, through the browser. You can see that it's overridden the font size to EM. Now, what if I try to make this 1.5 EM? And again, you can see that the font size of the H1 element has been overridden. Okay, let's try one more. Let's override the font weight, which you can see at the bottom is set to default to bold by default. So I'm going to set this to normal. And you can see that it goes from being bold to normal. Now see these little blue check boxes beside each rule. I can toggle these on and off so I can see what they look like. So I can go back to the original H1 default setting. So this is times with a font size of two and a font weight of bold, but I can turn on these rules one at a time to test my design. So that's pretty cool. Okay, what about the paragraph? Notice that the paragraph does not have any style defined in the HTML. And if we go back and look at that, you can see that there is no rule for the paragraph. So what if we want to play around with some style? Well, we can't change the user agent style sheet. It doesn't let us do that. And we don't want to necessarily add element style. If we do that, then it's going to add the style right into the element. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I type in font size, 2EM. See how it's adding a style right here inside the paragraph itself? And I don't really want to do that. I want to play around with style that I'm adding through to the P element through a rule like I would if I was doing it in the HTML. So what I can do is I can add a rule right here using this little plus sign. See when I hover over it, it says new style rule. So I'm going to click the plus sign and it adds a spot where I can now add more style to that paragraph. So I'm going to just click right next to this curly brace and it gives me a new line where I can add some style. So I'm going to change the color of my paragraph to red. And you can see that that change is now made in the paragraph. And again, I can click on and off to test these. If I want to test the font size to EM and reactivate the style here, I can do that just by clicking it on and off. Same thing here. I can click the color on and off to test my design. So you can edit your HTML as well as your CSS right in the browser, as well as you can access the most recently selected items in the console using these new dollar sign variables that Chrome has added to the browser. 
So again, to access those, you just jump over to the console and type in the variable that you want, and then you can modify it however you want. So this is playing with the browser console. You can do a lot with designing your page right in the browser. Thank you.